Now, before I derive drift velocity, I would like to discuss its definition. So what is this phenomenon all about? Well, we all know that metals have got small particles we call atoms. These atoms, of course, have got a nucleus, and around the nucleus, we have free-moving electrons. We also know that when chemicals participate in bonding, it is these outermost electrons in the outermost shell that participate in bonding. However, the structure of metals is such that each atom on average will have an outermost electron that is not required for bonding. So when the metal is not subject to any EMF or potential difference, these electrons will keep moving freely within the atomic structure. When a potential difference is put across the metal, the free electrons are aligned in such a way that they move in the direction opposite to the direction of the field. By this I mean that the electrons are attracted towards the positive terminal. Now, when I talk about direction of the field from electrostatics, we know that the field moves from positive to negative. That's the direction of the field. When I say that the electrons are move in the direction opposite the direction of the field, it means that they are moving in opposition. Of course, electrons are negatively charged, so they'll always be attracted towards the positive side, and that tantamounts to them being moving in the direction opposite to the direction of the field. So because of the application of the potential difference across the metallic conductor, a drift velocity is superimposed on the randomly moving free electrons. In other words, the electrons are drifted and they are now no longer moving randomly, but rather they drift in the opposite direction to the field with a certain velocity called the drift velocity. It is therefore my intention to derive the expression of the drift velocity coming up. Now, right before us, we have a model diagram. This is a wire, a conductor per se. It is having these free moving electrons that we've talked about. They are moving in that direction. Of course, that is the direction that is opposite to the direction of the field. This is the positive end, that's the negative end. This wire has got a cross-sectional area we are calling A and it is having a certain length, L, within there. So the parameters we shall be using, we shall be using capital I, which is representing the current moving in this conductor, the length, which is that, the length of the unit conductor we've chosen. A is the cross-sectional area of that conductor that we are using and N is the number of electrons Per unit volume, this is going to become our unit volume that we've chosen. It's like a small portion we've ch cut off from a wire. This is going to be our unit volume. And so N will be representing the number of electrons in that unit volume or the number of electrons per unit volume. E is going to be the electron charge that is going to be in each of those in that unit volume. Then V is... E is going to be the electron charge on each electron in that unit volume, then V will be the average drift velocity of the electrons. And so going uh, diving into the derivation, we'll begin with considering a unit volume. We shall consider a unit volume. We know that this wire or this conductor is in the form of um, a cylinder, and we know that the volume of a cylinder is given by cross-sectional area times the length and in this case the cross-sectional area is A times the length which is L so the unit volume we are going to concentrate on is A times L now the number of atoms in this unit volume which is that is going to be definitely equal to the volume times N remember our value of N here we said is the number of electrons in each unit volume so the number of electrons is going to be N times the volume which is that N times AL so now, now that we know the number of atoms in this unit volume, then we go ahead and find the charge, the total charge in this unit volume. The total charge or the quantity of charge in that unit volume, which we shall denote by Q, is going to be N times AL. This is the number of atoms times E to get the total charge. Remember, we said that E is the charge on each atom in the volume. So it's going to be N times A times L times E. So and now, since Q, this is the total charge, which is Q is equal to that, then it is from here that we shall say that by definition, that current is the rate of flow of charge. 
so it's going to be current it's going to be the rate of flow of charge which is dq dt and we know that q is our expression here which is n a l e but um we can simplify l further we know that l is equivalent to the distance of that unit volume and we know that by definition velocity is the rate of change of displacement this length represents displacement as well and so we know that the velocity is going to be equal to this length divide that by time or velocity can is the same as speed speed is equal to distance over time and in this case speed which is velocity is going to be equal to the distance which so happens to be the length of this conductor divide that by time so this is how it's coming out that velocity which is the speed is equal to the distance which so happens to be the length here divide that by time and so when we make l the subject of the formula it becomes l is equal to vt so now this vt is what we go ahead and substitute in the place of l right there so since the, from i is equal to the this expression so where there is l we put vt and so it become when we differentiate this with respect to t we shall find that the t is going to disappear since the n, a, v, and e are all constants. So the t, when we differentiate this expression with respect to t, the t disappears and we shall end up with i being equal to n, a, v, e. So if we may rearrange it, current i is equal to a nerve, where a is the cross-sectional area of the conductor, n are the number of electrons, e is the charge on each of that electron, and v is the drift velocity. So that is how we derive that expression. And if we may take it a bit further, if we want to find the charge density, it is going to be I over A. I over A, which is a nerve over A. The A's disappear, and that's how we can end up with current density being equal to J, which is NEV.